Hey everybody, Charles for HumbleMechanic.com and today we're going to be talking about some of the cool stuff that helps you drive your car. Alright, so I am actually in a 2016 Passat on my way back home from training and learning about how to align cars with these new driver assist systems. In fact, I am using the adaptive cruise control in this Passat right now, cruising at a speed of about 67 miles per hour and following a lady that has had her brake lights lit up for about the last four miles. So I'm not sure if she's riding her brakes or her car is just jacked up, but it gives me a perfect platform to talk about some of these new driver assists that to, you know, truth be told, these things are already out and, and fully functional in a ton of different cars, but you know, in the VW world, it's relatively new. Of course, we had them in the Phaeton and we had them in the B6 Passats uh, and in the earlier gen Torex, uh, Torex 2 Torex, but this is a Passat, right? Not a loaded up Passat. This one is more base model. I don't even remember what the sticker was, probably under 27 grand. And it has adaptive cruise control. Also, oddly enough, just to keep tally, the lady with the brake lights on is still in front of me and I can still see her brake lights. So I wanna talk about some of the things that I think are really going to change the game when it comes to alignments. Uh, that was sort of the focus of the class. And first we need to understand a little bit about these systems though. These systems can do a lot of things for us, right? I'm not regulating my speed at all, just like normal cruise control. But when the guy that just pulled in front of me, pulled in front of me, the vehicle slowed itself down. It didn't just continue to attempt to regulate speed. It regulates speed based on traffic in front. And this one uses a, a radar for that. Some cars will use a camera and one radar. Some cars like the Torax, they have a camera up here right in front of the rear view mirror and they have two radars to monitor traffic in front. Some cars are monitor three lanes, some cars six, some cars have blind spot monitoring where there's radars in the back of the vehicle that can pick up movement um, and, and detect a vehicle you know, next to me or further behind me. Those are the ones where the, the mirrors light up, which is, is pretty cool stuff. Some vehicles, even like the Golfs, have uh, a feature where they'll They'll keep you in the lane. They'll actually keep you from drifting out of the lane, which is really weird if you've never driven a car that does that. The Q7s will actually keep you, the new Q7s will actually keep you centered in the lane, not just, you know, let you weave in and out of the lane. So really trippy stuff. A lot of high-tech electronics that are new to vehicles, but not necessarily new in, in the world of technology. Volkswagen stuff's pretty trippy. It uses Doppler radars to uh, to detect movement and stuff. So cool, cool stuff, right? This stuff is, is going to probably be mandated by the government at some point. In fact, 2016, I think, is when we had to have backup cameras in cars. You may remember back to 08 when we had to have tire pressure monitor car in our cars. Uh, and, and I know what a lot of you guys are thinking. I don't want that crap in my car, right? I want to be able to get in my car. I want to be able to drive it exactly how I want. I don't want some computer telling me how I got to drive your, my car. I get it. I totally get it. And to a large degree, I, do, I, I, I agree with you. I, I really do. Um, but what about everybody else, right? This is, I'm, oh, I don't know, two and a half hours into about a five hour road trip. And I've seen some dumb crap other people have done. Cut me off, almost getting hit by a semi, tailgating semis, you name it. And on a trip down I-95 on the East Coast, you will see a lot of dumb crap. Tally again, the ladies' brake lights are still on on the car in front of me. I wish I could like rotate the, the GoPro so you guys can see that, but forget about yourself for a minute, right? We're so caught up in ourselves. Stop and think about all the other reckless, moronic drivers, like as you can see this van behind me that's following me way too close, uh, way too close and they're out there, right? If, if I glance, there's three cars behind him up his butt too. So uh, it, it's out there and this stuff's not going away. Again, think of someone other than yourself and their bad driving habits uh, and, and what that really does do for society as a whole with their poor, poor driving skills. 
But let's talk about it from a technician standpoint, right? This is when things get pretty serious to me. And we have so much as a technician that, that we put in our hands, people's lives in our hands, people's safety in our hands. And a lot of times I think it's discounted considerably. Um, you know, even, even something as simple as putting a tire on a car is uber safety, right? You do it wrong, tire blows out, families die. I mean, it, it, it can happen. So I, I think it, oftentimes as technicians or mechanics, whatever, we need to sort of take a step back and, and remember that people's lives hang in the balance of what we do all day, every day. But it gets really intense when we start talking about cars doing things for us. Things that were rather simple before aligning a vehicle now become ultra serious. Now if we change the rear suspension geometry at all, make a toe or a camber adjustment on the rear of the vehicle, we're changing our thrust line, which is the line from the front of the car to the back of the car. But now we have a camera that's relying on that measurement to predict what's happening in front of us, or not to predict really, but to see what's happening in front of us. So if our center line of our vehicle is pointed 10 degrees left, instead of the camera looking dead ahead, the camera's now looking into oncoming traffic. So it's not predicting what's going on over here as well as it needs to, or seeing as well as it needs to, to my right, and it's seeing what could potentially disturb the camera's uh, interpretation of what's happening because now we're looking way further into oncoming traffic than it thinks we should. This gets really scary when the car starts steering itself and maybe wants us to steer more this way than it really should. It also gets weird when we talk about autonomous braking. You know, this vehicle will slow down. It's pretty scary because it'll slow down very, very abruptly. Um, what happens if that measurement's off? What happens as a technician if we don't take the time to calibrate that radar when we take the front bumper cover off because whatever reason, right? We don't know how, we don't get paid for it. It's not in the repair manual that we have. Our shop doesn't have the right alignment software. Our shop doesn't have the right radar calibrating software and hardware to do that in. There's a million excuses on why it's not gonna get done. But we are, we have the responsibility to do this stuff right, and it's scary. Think, think about if you're, you know, that far off and what that means. That means maybe the car sideswipes somebody. I don't know. I don't know how, how tolerant these are for, for inaccuracies. One would think that they'd have to be semi-tolerant with inaccuracies, but what's the difference between rear-ending somebody and not rear-ending somebody? A millimeter? Two millimeters? Five millimeters? Ten millimeters? A foot? two feet, three feet, five feet, I think you get my point. We have to be exact on what we do, and we have to be thorough, and we have to make sure that we're doing it 100% by the book. And we're not just, and I'm as guilty as anybody of this, just mashing through screens in the scan tool till it tells me what I need to do. Uh, it, it's intense stuff. So what I guess what my point really is, guys, is that as you, uh, here's this car with the brake lights still on, by the way. You'll see it in a second. It's a Chevy, uh, Chevy Malibu, I think. Uh, as we move forward, we, we have to make sure that we are taking the care and the time to do these things right, to understand the car, to understand the systems, to understand that if we're working on a car that has driver assist systems, that we're thorough in our diagnosis, we're thorough in our repairs. I mean, driver assist systems are not new. Sure, cars that'll steer you straight, yeah, it's pretty new in the grand scheme of the automotive world. Cars that'll break by themselves, that's pretty new. In fact, the car's slowing down now because the car in front of me is going slower than I am. Uh, then I have the cruise control set, which I have the cruise control set at 81, and I'm going about 67 miles per hour because I'm leaving a safe distance from the car in front of me, which is cool because I can adjust that here with the, the button on the steering wheel. So I can get right up on them, or I can, you know, have a have a pretty pretty big uh, distance between the truck in front of me and the front of the Passat. But it's important that we understand the systems. It's important that we go through the whole ordeal to properly set these systems up, because as we know, people will use them probably for more than they should. Right? These are to assist a driver not to drive the car for you. Even though they can, 
right? Tesla's been doing it. Mercedes ha has it. The cars can drive themselves. The technology's there. It's fully capable of doing it. Of course, no Volkswagen's not not selling it that way. They're to uh, what? How do they put it? Create a more comfortable environment inside the vehicle for the driver. I think is how they phrase it. They're not calling these safety systems. They're calling them assist systems. Systems that help the driver. But they've been around a really long time. ABS is a driver assist system. It eliminated the need for you to pump the brake pedal in a panic stop. Now it'll do it, or to prevent a skid. Now it'll do it for you. Uh, traction control is a driver assist system. It stops one of my wheels from slipping, or if I'm going around a corner too fast, it'll it'll bite one of the one of the brakes and slow me down to uh, to prevent a rollover or a skid. It, uh, so they're out there and they've been there for a long time. Seat belts, right? Driver assist system, so you don't go flying through the dang windshield. That is more of a safety system, but you guys understand what I'm saying. This stuff's not going anywhere, is, is my roundabout point. I know a lot of you don't want it, I get it, but it's not going anywhere. The government will most likely mandate this stuff to some level at some point on all manufacturers in the probably not too distant future. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I think it's a pretty good thing. Again, I'm not super worried about my driving ability. It's all these other knuckleheads that are around me. And again, you spend you know an hour or two hours on I-95 on the East Coast, or I think anywhere in California, or anywhere uh, where traffic's bad, like this jackass from Connecticut that just cut across three lanes that I wish you guys could have saw. Um, you, God, see, see what I'm talking about? Idiot drivers, right? Uh, you want other drivers to have a backup for them not paying attention. Sure, they should be paying attention. 100% agree. But what happens when they're not? What happens when they're sipping their latte? Or what happens if the kids scream? This is one I've been involved with personally. The kids screaming in the back and you know, you're about ready to pull your hair out because they've been screaming for the last hour. So we, we want people to have these systems. And as time goes on, they will get better. They will get more accurate. They will be more common. People won't be scared of them. And cars can bring themselves to a stop, a complete stop. And they know you need to stop before you know you need to stop, which is really, really cool. So like I said, guys, if you're a technician out there that does alignments, make sure that you're doing them right. You're following the letter of the law to the T. These are huge, huge, huge deals when it comes to uh, providing a safe environment for a customer in, in their vehicle. They're relying on these systems to perform in a certain manner. And uh, it's it's up to us to make sure that we do everything in our power to, uh, to make that happen for them. All right, guys. Hey, I'm going to wrap it up there. Question of the day. What do you think about driver assist systems? And uh, you know what? Let's let's try and keep this one a little bit friendly because I know a lot of you guys have really a lot of uh, a lot of you guys have strong opinions about it. So, uh, what do you think about driver assist? Hey, if you like the video, throw a thumbs up on YouTube. I always appreciate that. You can also subscribe on YouTube or on the blog at humblemechanic.com. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, the blog, and of course on Snapchat. All right, guys. Hey, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.